This is a training series made in collaboration with Socony. I'm going to be testing, training, and racing in their all new endorphin range for my Noosa Marathon build. Socony has a long history of producing high quality footwear for runners. Their shoes are recognized for their comfort, durability, and performance, making them a favorite amongst serious runners and athletes. You can find their all new endorphin range out now on their website. So big shout out to Socony for jumping on board the Chasing 245 series. What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of The Training Diaries, the series where I talk about my week of training in a more podcast, conversational style format. I talk all things about the Noosa Marathon training block and this week we're talking about the week that was the 1st to the 7th of April. I just want to apologize for this video coming out um, so late, such a like four or five days late. Um, the reason that it is so late is because I've had some hard drive issues. Uh, my hard drive crashed, long story short. Um, so I didn't actually have any where to export the video to that had enough space. Rather than export it in like 1080p and it'd be kind of bad quality, I'd rather try to keep it to the 4K and waited until I got a new hard drive, which I got a new one today. So that's why I'm filming and it's gonna be out tomorrow for you guys, which is your Saturday, unless you're in America, which is your Friday. Confusing. But I hope it's all right that this video is a little bit late guys. And again, I do apologize uh, about that one. So my last week of training, it was a little bit of a taper week as I had an all out 5K race on Saturday. Now I did vlog the entire event and that is actually getting posted as its own video um, and it's releasing tomorrow or the day after this video gets released. You can look forward to that one, a double upload on a weekend from Dave. What more could you ask for? My overall mileage for the week came in at 98 kilometers, so 98 kegs and all in all, it was a pretty decent uh, week of mileage on the legs still. And just precursor for this week, once again, um, I ran watchless. So I won't bore you with the details on how it's not ideal and how I really don't like it. If you wanna hear all about that, you can listen to last week's episode again, or if you haven't listened to it already, then go to last week's episode and I go on all about how having, well, not having a watch is just, it's it sucks, to be honest. But just know all of the runs that I ran this week, I ran without a watch, I ran carrying my phone and I ran it off Strava. So with my hours at work still being a little bit all over the place, I ran at all times of the day, which meant sometimes I was running in cooler weather, sometimes running in hot weather, and sometimes running in even hotter weather. But let's get into my training week and let's get Strava up, shall we? This video series is proudly sponsored by Aid Station. They are supporting me with all of my fueling and hydration needs for the Noosa Marathon training block. I've been using Aid Station to stock up on gels, electrolytes, and triple magnesium since the Melbourne Marathon build, and I haven't looked back since. They are offering my viewers 10% off with the code DAVES10, which you can find in the description of this video. Back to you, Dave. So starting off with Monday, guys, as always, we start off with my 40 minutes recovery. So this is usually done at around five to 5.30 pace, however I'm feeling on the day after my um, long run the day before, but for this day, we ran eight kilometers, 5.15 pace, so 42 minutes, so just over 40 minutes. Kept it super chill, and we wore the On Cloud Eclipse. Once again, which is my go-to easy day shoe. I also have just posted a 250 mile review um, on the On Cloud Eclipse last week on the channel, so if you're interested in knowing more about those shoes or you've thought about buying them, um, Watch that video and then make yourself a decision. But moving on to Tuesday, we have my first and only session of the week. Like I said, it was a bit of a taper week. So what we did, we made Tuesday a fairly tough um, session with a mixture of threshold and VO2. And then um, I just kind of ran easy for the rest of the week um, leading up to Saturday's race. But for the Tuesday's session, yeah, it was interesting. I swear I say that about every session, but this one, like I said earlier, I was running with just my phone. I am still not used to running with my phone. I'm used to running without it, so I didn't think to charge it. And I went into this run with it at 25% battery. And for some stupid reason, I thought, yeah, I'll that will last me um, for 
the entire session and I'll be able to listen to music as well. So I was doing that and of course it went dead. Another thing that really sucks about running with your phone, I know I said I wasn't gonna complain about this, but one thing that, probably the worst thing that sucks about running with your phone is um, like you have to have the screen open. So the battery goes dead a lot faster, which I didn't really factor for. Um, but anyway, the session goes as follows. So we had two by five minutes, two by four minutes, two by three minutes, two by two minutes, and then two by one minute. So the reps had one minute rest after them, and then the sets, I had two minutes rest. So it would go five minutes effort, one minute rest, five minute effort, two minute rest, and move on to the four minutes and so on. I've written a little description here, it says starting at half marathon effort and working down to 5K effort. Once again, I had no idea what pace I was going. Um, it was just me and the peaceful open road. My phone went dead after the last one minute rep, so this is why it's missing the 15 minute cooldown. So in total, I ran 12.55 Ks and it was 438 pace um, and I was moving for an hour. So like I said, my phone went dead just after the last one minute rep, which I'm actually stoked that it lasted that long because I could easily just manually upload the um, 15 minute 3K cooldown uh, in a separate upload on Strava. Um, and I knew where 3Ks was fr home from the open road that I was uh, doing my session on. But yeah, running without knowing your pace and just running to feel, Again, it's, it's a humbling experience because you think you kind of know what the paces are, but you're running with, like the way I do it, I run and I feel like I run a little bit hard just because I don't want to be underperforming or running slower than my mar half marathon effort, if that makes sense. Um, so I always end up going faster, trying to like, um, make up for if I'm not running fast enough and I think that really cooks me and this session got very very tough um, the one minute efforts just end up being like a bit of a sprint probably closer to mile pace but all in all it was a really good session I ran this in the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4s so I didn't have the carbon plates and I really felt like I needed it. If I felt like the session would have been completely different if I wore the elites, but I guess that's why you do those um, sessions in your trainers so that when you put the elites on, they feel amazing. So Wednesday, I had to run at 2.30 in the afternoon just because I had a double shift the morning and the afternoon shift at my work. Um, this I've written here is quite possibly the hottest weather I've ever ran in. I think it was around 30 degrees and it was just disgusting. Um, I had an hour to do on the training plan. I ran 11.61 Ks, 5.10 pace. This felt like one of the longest runs I've ever done. And I really felt really drained after this. And when I went to work in the afternoon, I just felt like, for lack of a better word, fucked. It was tough. And I wore the On Cloud Eclipse for that one. The next day I had my Thursday um, 80 minutes, easy 80 minutes. This one I got to do early in the morning which is always going to be ideal. This was perfect conditions, clear skies, nice breeze, great temperature, and it showed because I turned this one into a bit of a cheeky uh, progression 80 minutes. So I wrote here in the description, felt like progressing this morning, also didn't look at pace, so it worked out pretty good. So I ran 17.27 Ks in the 80 minutes, and that was at 4.38 pace. I started off around that five minute pace and then pretty much every K I kind of just went down one or two seconds and I finished with my last kilometer at that 425 pace um, and it felt great. It felt really good. I feel like if I was wearing a heart rate monitor during this um, that it would, I don't think it would have gone over 160 even at that 425 pace. I was really feeling fit and this gave me a lot of confidence especially after the absolutely dreadful run the day before on the Wednesday that easy 60 or not so easy 60. But then we come to Friday which because I had that race on Saturday I just had a recovery 40 minutes planned so I ran 8k's at five minute five minute pace. Um, nice and easy got to do that one in the morning again so yeah smooth sailing for that one. The next day I had my up track club run club session 
Uh, the boys, a couple of the boys were doing a session and uh, a few of the boys were doing the race with me in the afternoon. So we just decided to do a nice easy jog while those guys were doing their session. So I just did six Ks at 520 pace. So a pretty easy half an hour little shake out before we go into the race on a Saturday afternoon. Now, I'm not gonna get into too much details about the race um, in this recap, just because the video that's getting posted tomorrow, I'm, I go into great detail um, at the end of the video on how I felt, how the race went, and all that sort of stuff. So hang in just one more day, and then you guys will get your fix on that PB uh, 5K effort. But we had the rebound super secret 5k in the afternoon this was 5k's in duration it said in the description chuff to the pb manual upload because i was wearing the girlfriend's apple watch i'm not going to get into the details of that you can wait until tomorrow's episode to learn all about that but yeah it was pretty funny i was dressed like an absolute g like just i felt like a runner i felt like a runner for that session um and then after we did a one and a half K cool down. So I did one and a half K warm up and cool down. I just manually uploaded them after. And then we come to Sunday. So Sunday was on the cards, well on the plan, I had just an easy two hours um, because I knew I was gonna be feeling a bit sore after that all out 5K sprint. And I was, my calves were beat up. But what we did here, I ran this one with Tomo, who I did the 5K with, and who I'm running Noosa Marathon with. And we ran around the city. I said here, chill two hours. Um, we finished the run, and for some reason, my watch, or not my watch, for some reason, my Strava on my phone paused for 10 minutes. So it missed exactly two Ks. Um, and we can see on the map where it's got a gray area where it didn't actually log. It just made like a really quick straight line. Um, on that area on the map. So that's how we know that I missed out on 2Ks and Tomo's watch was 2Ks ahead of mine in exactly 10 minutes. So I have an hour 49 here, 22K, but in actual fact, it was two hours and I ran around that 24K mark at 4.56s. So this one was done nice and early and it was a bit of a cooler day. Not really much to speak about for that long run. Carbs were feeling a little bit tight after the, the day before and um, we yeah, just just got a classic two hour long run done. Tomo actually met me at the Kangaroo Point Cliffs and he ran 40 minutes to get there. So he did a big shift to two hours 45. So good on that bloke, I think he ran around 35K. Not bad, not bad, um, or at least 34K. But yeah, that Sunday, two hour long run, uh, finished up what was a pretty good week. Um, I will say a little spoiler for next week's training um, log. My calves have been pretty beat up up until about yesterday. So Thursday of this week. The I didn't think that the 5K was gonna hurt me that much, but yeah, I guess I haven't really done an all out sprint for 16 and a half minutes ever and yeah my body was 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 paying its toll um, for the beginning or the, at least the first half of this week for sure but that's going to conclude my training week for the week that was the first to the 7th of april and what we're going to do now we're going to go into some questions that people have asked me on my instagram um, to finish off the video so with these questions guys, I literally just screenshot them and I barely read them until it's time to film. So I try to keep these as off the cuff as I can and like I don't want to just be writing down a response um, and trying to script these answers. I, I just like the idea of reading the question and just whatever comes to my mind, um, I blow it out. So hopefully these have been um, like decent value for you guys um, at the end of these videos. I enjoy doing them and I love like answering your questions. So if you do have a question, comment in comment down below of this video, questions that I can answer next week, or just stick around on my Instagram on the Sunday and then you should be able to answer in the question box that I put on my story. And also sorry if the wind is a bit windy. I'm not sure if this is like getting picked up on the on the mic. Um, but first question we have running my first half in July, just aim to finish lol. Plated racer or max cushion shoe? 100% Plated racer. Max cushion shoe 
it's going to be good. I feel like it's going to be good. I know it is your first half marathon, um, but is it your first half marathon race or is it your first half marathon in general? I think either way, you're going to benefit more from having a plated racer. In saying that, if you don't want to go out and buy a brand new shoe, if what you have right now is a max cushion shoe, by all means, you're more like you can definitely use that. But me personally, I would, I would say, get yourself that max cushion. Oh, sorry, get yourself that plated racer. Get yourself in those sparse shoes. Change your entire persona, your whole character as you put them on, and just like it's race day, it's ready to turn it on. Like I'm about to run a half marathon for the either the first time or the fastest time that I ever have before. And just feel like a boss, feel like a boss that day. Um, and to be honest, a plated racer is gonna come in handy on your speed sessions. Um, and it's also gonna come in handy on that next half marathon or that next marathon progression that you do um, coming up in the future. So I would say definitely a plated racer or if all you have is a max cushion shoe, yeah, more than welcome to use that, but you guys know where I stand on this now. Next question. This one's from Harry, he's from a run club, legend. He says, with the hardest geezer finishing his insane goal and Ned Brockman too, do you have any interest in doing some crazy feats? Maybe not to that extreme, but as an example, a marathon a day for a month or something of the sort. I have thought about this and to be honest, it doesn't really interest me too much at the moment. At the moment, I'm really just trying to prioritize my training towards the marathon and the shorter distances and just basically just trying to get as fast as I can, um, especially while I'm young. I feel like as I get a little bit older, I'll be more inclined to move into that ultra space. Like in saying that, it's, it's always gonna be there for me to dabble into. So I'm not gonna rush things, I'm not gonna rush into the ultra scene, but we're doing like a crazy feat like a marathon a day for seven days. I did back-to-back -back marathons when I first started YouTube. Yeah, it was fun. I definitely enjoyed that challenge, but I get more out of the racing side of things and hitting PBs and, and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's where I get the most out of running at the moment is, is improving in that. Um, so maybe in the future, maybe when I get bored or I'm sick of doing marathon preps, maybe even triathlon. Dave the triathlete, start a new channel. Who knows, who knows? But thanks for the question, Harry. Um, and then last question, this one's from Michael. He's also from my run club, that wind. Um, it says, favorite race or event and why? My favorite race, it's gotta be the marathon, 100%. The marathon is what you have to put the most in to and it's what you get the most out of. Like that feeling of finishing a marathon doesn't compare to any other feeling in your life. I mean, I don't have any children and I'm not married or anything like that. I assume those things are, are pretty up there. But for me right now and what I've experienced in life, nothing compares to, to finishing a marathon, especially with a PB. Um, and that brings me to the next part of the question. So event, and it would have to be the Melbourne Marathon. 100%, it's where I ran my biggest PB. Um, and it's where I felt actually strong and confident for pretty well the majority of the race and that's where I feel like I had unbroken training leading in um, and it just ticks a lot of boxes for me. It was great weather, it was awesome seeing the city for the first time. Um, so yeah, the Melbourne Marathon would have to be my favorite event that I've done so far, definitely. And I'm going back again in October for hopefully another PB. Hopefully to get that feeling again. But this time, Mikhail's gonna be with me, which is gonna add to the enjoyment and just add to that um, emotional experience as well. Um, but yeah, that's all the questions that I'm gonna answer for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this uh, episode of The Training Diaries. I think this is episode five. We're getting there, guys. It's now seven weeks, eight weeks, seven weeks till the Noosa Marathon. It is coming up so quick. Um, I'm really enjoying training at the moment and yeah thank you so much for watching guys if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future content or anything i post in the future about the uh, noosa marathon series and make sure you give this video a like and share it with your running friends helps me out a lot thank you so much for watching guys i'll see you in the next one peace